So what we're doing now is we're spending about 30 minutes, 25 uh, to 30 minutes, uh, having an overview of winch assist harvesting. So the winch assist harvesting is a nice extension to um, the harvesting systems that we've covered to date. We've stepped through ground-based, we've looked at cable logging. Uh, winch assist is a relatively new technology, it's come in in the last 10 years, um, and, and it's expanded really, really very quickly here in New Zealand, but also worldwide. So what is winch assist? So can you guys, sorry, has it just swapped screen for you? Uh, Mr. McClear, I've got you up. Can you just nod if you can see an excavator sitting on the ground? Thank you. And then, so what I'm gonna do is just play this little video and then, uh, sorry, you're the only one up on my screen, so I have to talk to you. Um, uh, so what is winch assist? I'm just gonna show this short video whereby winch assist really is using a winch, which you can see in the back of the machine there, and a wire rope, which you'll see coming up over the machine. Um, and you'll, you'll see that, and it goes out to a machine that's working on the slope. So I'll just start that video, and it should give you an idea of it working. So in this case, it's an EMS machine, and here you can see a tracked fellow buncher working its way up the slope. You can see the winch at the back of the machine. It's simply working. It can spool in and out, powered by that excavator, which is called the anchor machine. Okay. And then what you can attach is a felling machine, you can attach a grapple, uh, but you can also attach a skidder uh, or a forder, any machine like that. So you can see here the machine's working up and down the corridor, harvesting the trees, laying them out. It could be a head of shovel, it could be a head of a forder, it could be a head of uh, some cable logging that might be done. Okay. So what is it called? There's actually a couple of terms that I'd like you to be familiar with. There's a couple of fun terms on the east side of the states. We used to call it yo-yoing. So you're effectively yo-yoing your machines down the slope. Um, uh, in, the, in Vancouver or up in Canada, they kind of call it bungee harvesting. And it's actually, that's a difference to New Zealanders because we've kind of made uh, winch assist famous. We're also famous for bungee jumping. So they've called it bungee harvesting. Another term that you'll, those are fun terms, but not really serious terms. Another term you'll hear quite often is the word tethered. So you can see where the word tether comes from and that you are tethering the machine, but um, I don't prefer to use the word tether because by definition, tether means to restrict an operation, whereby what we're really doing is extending the operation. The two terms so I would like you to be familiar with is one is traction assist, and traction assist is the term they use in Europe. So the difference between traction assist and winch assist, which is the term we use and preferably use in New Zealand, is that in traction assist, you are assuming that the machine can move up and down the slope by itself. And the winch system is really just supporting it. So it might be reducing the environmental impact, might be increasing its stability. When we move to winch assist in New Zealand, we are actually helping the machines up and down the slope. So the machine should still be stable, but we're able to go places the machine wouldn't be able to go itself. One of the ways that you differentiate between the two, traction assist has a factor of safety of two with regard to the design, and winch assist by New Zealand law has a factor of safety of three. Why this sudden interest and this really quite extensive development in winch assist? We've got a lot of steep terrain. Many countries operating plantation forests have steep terrain, but in the near future, about 55% of the harvesting we'll do is gonna be on steep terrain over 40% slopes. We do have cable logging systems. Our cable logging systems are very good. They're very well developed, but Overall, they're relatively unsafe. We still have about two to three fatalities for every 10 million cubic meters harvested, and they're relatively expensive. They're about 10 New Zealand dollars more per ton compared to a ground-based system, simply because they're a lot more difficult to operate. They have typically lower productivity and higher day costs. What's the answer? Well, we've always known that mechanization Mechanization significantly reduces risks and accidents, and mechanization can also really improve your productivity and your cost effectiveness. There's actually been a lot of machine developments over time.
that help us operate machines on steeper and steeper slopes. So on the bottom left there, you see a John Deere 909, but that's what's called a self-leveling machine. So if you see the tracks sitting on the ground, and if you see the body of the machine, the body of the machine is at a different angle. It's more flat compared to the tracks. So that makes it easier to operate, also uh, more comfortable for the operator. The other thing that you can see perhaps in the top, um, so it's bottom left, right, top right picture, is that some of these harvesters really have reduced their center of gravity. So in this one, the cab, as well as the engine pack, the powertrain on the back, has been moved right down onto the chassis so that you've got a lower center of gravity and they are more stable on steep slopes. With regard to our wheeled machines, there's a number of things you can do. So you see that forder in the bottom right hand corner. They've put tracks on the bogies at the back and chains on the wheels at the front. And both of those features can help a machine, a wheeled machine, climb onto steeper slopes. So winch assist really is a step change. What we're doing is reducing the need for manual work. So especially with regard to chainsaw falling or with regard to setting chokers ahead of cable logging operations. Again, I'll just show you this little video. So here's a person obviously sitting in machine, felling uh, trees on a very steep slope. He's in a comfortable, he or she is in a comfortable air conditioned cab. It's a very professional work environment and it's very quick. That last little bit is a time lapse video. And so what we can see here is also that the timber that's being harvested is very nicely laid out for the subsequent operation. So now we can also start to mechanize the extraction because the timber is very nicely presented. What I can say the results to date is very favorable. We've harvested more than 25 million cubic meters with winch assist. And so if you look at the number of people that may have been really badly hurt, we've probably saved at least five lives by adopting this new technology in the last 10 years. <clears throat> There's some really high tech equipment out. So we are mainly uh, winch assisting excavator machines and that's working well for us. But there's a number of European manufacturers that are putting a lot of design um, expertise into equipment. So on the left, you see the Ponzi machine. On the right, I think it's the Valmet. But both of these machines are specifically designed for operating on steep slopes. So you can see that independent bogey system working uh, on the right-hand side machine. It means that the tracks stay on the ground a lot more stable. On the left-hand side, uh, you can see the Ponzi, which is called the Scorpion King. And you see the boom is actually coming over the back of the cab. And that means the operator actually has visibility both out to the left and right, which is much more important when you're working on steep slopes. Just a little video clip here. So here we can see one of these wheel machines. Again, it's got the belt on the front, the chains on the back, and it's coming off a road or a landing, and it's moving onto this really steep slope. Right. So that's really quite impressive. You see it moving through the forest here, just starting to slip and slide a little bit, but you can just see how steep they're able to work and how well that they're able to work. What are some of the early developments in New Zealand? There's a gentleman by the name of Ross Woods. He works in the Nelson area and he's really credited with the first viable New Zealand system. And all he did was he put a winch on the back of his bulldozer. So you see the bulldozer top middle picture there with the winch on the back. And he was simply connecting up his excavator based machines to allow them to operate on steeper slopes. We became a lot more professional. Nigel Kelly and the manufacturing company Trenda was the first to design a specific machine. It's called the Climax. Uh, you can see there, the Climax is quite unique still in New Zealand in that it has the winch integrated into the machine. So you see that bottom left hand picture, the winch is actually in the base of that machine coming out through those rollers. We now have more than five main manufacturers in New Zealand. So here's some numbers. Um, we've got, uh, so the company built 11 Climaxes whereby only three remain in New Zealand. You can see the two main manufacturers being EMS, the traction line, and Falcon Forestry, 
which is DC equipment. They've both produced more than 100 machines now. Rob is another big manufacturer up from Northland. And for example, there's a Walker Engineering. I think they've made seven They're down in Dunedin. But the bottom line is 270 of these machines have been built and sold. There's over 120 units working in New Zealand. So it's become really quite a common system. The other thing you can do the maths, uh, these systems sell for at least $300,000 each. So it isn't just that we've got winch assist operations in New Zealand forestry, but we've also got a manufacturing industry that's doing very well by selling these machines in New Zealand and overseas. What are some of the key system differences <clears throat> mentioned just before? If we look on the right hand side, so B, that is a system where the winch is integrated into the machine. <clears throat> it's purpose built. So what we need to do there is secure the rope at the top of the hill, can be secured to a stump, a deadman, or you can connect it to another machine. Okay, so the cable is being winched in from the machine and it's not being dragged along the ground. Those are some of the main benefits of an integrated machine. By far the most common system in New Zealand is the one on the left, it's a two-part system, where we have this anchor machine with the winch, can be a bulldozer or an excavator, and then connect it to the machine that's working on the slope, okay? What you have here is the flexibility of swapping the machines in and out. So for example, if the slope is not that steep, you simply disconnect it, and your machine is as normal operating on the slope, or if you want to swap the shoveling machine out with the felling machine, you simply disconnect it through a shackle, okay? The other big benefit that really sold the New Zealand industry on option A is the mobility of the anchor, right? So instead of having to connect ropes and get out of the machine, you're simply jumping into that dozer or the excavator and moving that system around to allow you to move the winch assist machine, uh, allow to move the winch assist operation to a different part of the stand. Here's just an example from Europe. I've just included some videos uh, because it is an overview lecture, just so you get a really good idea of what the uh, system is. Okay. And I think I can introduce this laser pointer. So you've got the wheeled machine, two sets of bogey uh, wheels with tracks on them. This is actually the winch assist unit at the back. And if you've caught it here is the winch assist line. So that's connected up to a stump or a tree at the top of the hill. And in this case, they're able to operate on slopes over 90% uh, with these types of systems. Really quite impressive. Okay. All right. So now we're on to those anchor types. So in New Zealand, I've mentioned option A was most common. We've got the dozer. Probably about only a quarter of our total systems are in that dozer. Initially, we chose the dozer because it's a nice sturdy base got this really large blade for extra holding power and of course it's got that low center of gravity. Okay. If you look on the right hand side that was option B, uh, sorry that was the, the second option is the excavator at the top of the hill with the winch mounted on the back. The nice thing about the excavator is it keeps the ropes off the ground. You can lift the rope using the bucket using the boom for a line shift but it has that disadvantage of less operating angle compared to the dozer. Even though some of that has been resolved, you see the little figure at the top by moving that block down towards the bucket. Now you've got a lower center of gravity point effectively as well, and the excavators have become more stable. The reason why they've done that, there's been about four or five excavators that have tipped over. When you get them out of line, they're very tippy. Um, so that has resolved that particular problem. In terms of planning, um, how do these systems work? Most of the time, you're trying to operate the system straight up and down the hill. So you have your excavator with the winch on it or dozer in line with the machine that's operating down the hill. However, what's become very convenient and a very common practice is to use trees and or blocks to change the angle and to help increase the machine utilization. So that little figure on the left shows how that might work. So we're basically felling the timber, and as we move further along, we're simply putting that rope around the next stump and going down the next line. You can see that visually on the photo on the right-hand side, 
where the winch assist machine might be sitting up on the landing, it's coming down that ridge line and then moving down that slope, turning the corner by using a stump and or a block. I'm just going to introduce some of the research work that our students have done actually. Here's some nice dissertation projects. Um, in this case, it was Cameron Leslie, just graduated last year. Uh, he's up from Northland, up from Kataya. Um, so he actually had the opportunity to study three systems in New Zealand, and then he went over to Canada and he studied three harvesting, uh, winch assist harvesting systems in Canada. Okay. So uh, you see a nice photo there, as you can see in Canada, they often have some very difficult um, operational conditions. There he is in the snow and a bit of a blizzard, uh, but that's another reason why you want to go mechanized. You can keep felling, you can keep working in blizzard conditions, whereas a motor manual faller, somebody working on the slope uh, by themselves is not gonna work. So what Cameron found out was that you actually, for nearly all of these systems, you have really high productivity, but relatively low utilization. And the other thing is you have really quite considerable variability between these systems, and that can be related back to stand, terrain, but also setup factors. Okay. You have a little table down below where you can see that utilization average is only 55%, and we know that that is not a very high average. But on the other hand, when it is working, we can have productivity as high as you can see that one New Zealand case study where they're in a good setting with decent sized trees and they're cutting down almost 100 cubic meters per hour. So that's a really, really big productivity um, that they've achieved there. But the average is 66, as you can see, that very high variability in the system. Here's another nice little study just from last year. So Matt Podofsky, some of you may, may remember him. Um, so he did his dissertation work looking at a winch assist skitter. So he went up to Gisborne to do this case study. There's only a couple of winch assist skitters working in New Zealand. I think we've adopted this idea from Canada, um, but it's showing some real potential. In this case, the forest owner is specifically using winch assist skitter in Gisborne because they're making sure they're protecting the waterways. So normally when harvesting a steep slope like this, they would span a cableway all the way from one side of the slope to the other and pull the trees all the way across, which may damage the waterway. It can also leave a lot of residue in the waterway. So by using a winch assist skitter, you can come down from both sides and always be pulling away from the waterway, leaving that stream side and the riparian zone intact. Just a little bit of drone footage. So here you can see that winch assist skitter. It's connected through that block to the blade. So it's a big six wheeled grapple skitter. And so he's just dropping off that back slope now. So he wouldn't be able to get down or he certainly wouldn't be able to get up that slope without the winch assist. So he's gonna go all the way to the back of that block and hopefully you can see the timber is bunched down uh, at the bottom of the stand. Yep. Okay. Something I've stressed in both classes is the importance of productivity. So in Matt's dissertation, he actually put a GPS unit on it. He also used a classic time study uh, technology to determine what's the average cycle time and how that changes with extraction distance so that you can get that productivity. So here is an example of data that Matt has captured, presented in this Excel chart, and we get this really clear trend line. So those little brown points on the left is when the slope is still relatively flat, and those green and yellow points on the right-hand side are two different extraction trails when the track was getting steeper, and you can see that it was going out uh, up to 300 meters, was taking 800 seconds, which is what, about 13 minutes to do a single cycle. You can also see that the variability at those long distances really increases simply because of the complexity of getting all the way out there. On the top left of this slide, you'll see the GPS. So here's the GPS tracker overlaid on Google Earth. So you can actually see the study location, and where that skitter was moving. Of 
course, now the timber has all been harvested, but you can see that path one and path two, as well as the flatter terrain on the top. And of course, the beginning point there is the landing, the top left corner. But what you can see, here's a photo of the site. And I think this is three or four weeks after harvest, but you can see it greening up really quite quickly. So it's a really nice job that they've achieved, even though there was quite a lot of dis soil disturbance at the time of harvest. So this is another good thing. Um, we've always stressed, it isn't just about production, it isn't just about safety, it's also about environmental performance. So Matt measured the level of soil disturbance. You can see there was a lot of undisturbed soil, there was a lot of slash left covering the site, those are all good things. But there was a deep disturbance in the range of 10 to 11% in his different surveys, and shallow disturbance in the level of 20 to 27%. And again, it's nice to have these measurements because you can start comparing system not only their productivity performance, but also their environmental performance. Guess what? This is already the last slide. Um, keeping these lectures very short because it's, no, it's, I know it's hard to stay engaged in an online lecture. Winch assist, look, they're very common in Central Europe. There's already more than a thousand winch assist um, units operating in Europe, very common in Austria, common in Italy, common in Germany. Okay, they've also become common now in plantation forest settings in South America, as well as up in Canada, expanding now into the United States. So we can't say it's a new system, it really is a well-established system, really is helping extend our operating range, and we're learning how to become very productive. So it allows that mechanization on steep slopes, so it can improve safety and productivity, this we know, but it is expensive to operate, okay? It also has low utilization, so you need to manage that carefully. And of course, it can impact the soil. Anytime you start operating larger pieces of equipment on the slope, you have to take care of the environment. So that's really where you guys come in. Um, needs careful planning, and that's why we need good forest scientists and forest engineers to help this system be successful. An opportunity now to ask some questions if you have any questions. One thing I am gonna do is I'm just gonna stop the recording